Why do certain places have high population densities and other places very low? Well, there are many different factors which can cause a region to have a high or low population density. Money is probably the main one. Well, the opportunity to make money, that is. Put it this way, if you were an experienced investment banker, would you rather live in central London or in the middle of the Scottish Highlands? These economic opportunities attract lots of people. This lots of people then requires infrastructure and transport. This is why cities like London have complex transport systems, whereas in the Scottish Highlands you'd be lucky to find an hourly bus. On the flip side, areas with low population densities tend to be places that aren't really great to live. Places with extreme climates, conflict and difficult geography. Let's take Egypt as our first example. So Egypt has one of the most interesting population densities in the world. I'll give you one guess as to why it looks like this. The majority of Egypt's population is concentrated along the River Nile and its delta, as these regions provide fertile land for agriculture and access to water resources. An unbelievable 95% of the country's 110 million or so population live within just a few kilometres of the Nile and its delta. The Nile River was considered the source of life by the ancient Egyptians and played a vital role in the country's history and rich culture. Humanity owes a lot to this river. The most densely populated areas are primarily urban centres, including cities like Cairo, Alexandria and Giza. However, much of Egypt's landmass, such as the Western Desert, remains sparsely populated. This is due to the harsh environment conditions. Temperatures here can be inhospitable, and there is very little infrastructure. There is a rather strange term known as the Blue Banana, which is a region encompassing this region here, which is known as the Megalopolis of Europe or the Liverpool-Milan Axis. It is a discontinuous urbanisation corridor in Western and Central Europe, with a population of about 100 million. The northern part of the so-called banana extends to England's northwest, where you'll find cities like Manchester and Liverpool. It then travels south across England, across Birmingham and London, before moving over the English Channel, where it incorporates many important European cities such as Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Milan, Zurich, Munich and Brussels to name a few. Within this region are some of the busiest airports and seaports in the world, as well as the headquarters of the EU, the European Parliament, the International Court of Justice, NATO and the European Central Bank. So yeah, quite an important banana. Australia is one of the most sparsely populated countries on Earth, at just 3.5 people per kilometre squared. In fact, this makes it the second or third least densely populated country on the planet. The Northern Territory is even more sparsely populated than this, at just 0.16 people per kilometre squared. This region stretches for a distance of around 1.4 million kilometres squared. This is a larger area than the entire country of Peru. The Northern Territory has a population of around a quarter of a million. Excluding Perth on Australia's southwestern coast, the main population centre of the country is along its east coast, specifically from Brisbane down to Sydney and then all the way down to Melbourne. These three cities alone contain around half of the country's entire population. Now, barely anyone lives in the centre of Australia, which is easily over a thousand kilometres from the coast. The region is essentially barren desert. There is one slight anomaly, however, as Alice Springs is a town with over 25,000 people, sitting slap bang in the middle of the country. This accounts for around 0.1% of the country's entire population. Next up is a country that couldn't be any more different to Australia in terms of population density spread, India. India is perhaps one of the only countries whose population is actually spread out across the entire country. On this map, the majority of India is blue, showing that most of the country is densely populated. There are very few regions that you could describe as sparsely populated, especially when compared to the likes of Northern Territory or Western Australia. You then have extremely densely populated regions spread out across the country such as Mumbai, Bangalore, Kolkata and Delhi to name a few. India is of course now the world's most populated country, 
approaching 1.5 billion at the time of making this video. India is a large country, but certainly not the largest. It is around a third of the size of the US, Canada or China, of which it shares a similar population to the latter. This means that a lot of people have to cram into a country that is relatively small when compared to the world's largest countries. India's population is spread out due to historical settlements, diverse geography, cultural factors, urbanisation, resource availability and government policies, leading to a varied distribution across the country. Our next country has a name quite similar to that of India, yet its population density spread is very different. It is Indonesia. So Indonesia is spread out over 17,000 islands across the Indian Ocean, between Southeast Asia and Oceania. Over half of its entire population lives on just one single island. This is also the single most populated island on Earth, Java. This results in their population density map looking like this. Most of the country's territory is white or light blue, whereas Java is very dark blue with the urban sprawl of Jakarta being red. Jakarta by metro and urban area is the world's second most populated city. Indonesia also owns around three quarters of the island of Borneo. Here you can see the odd blue city spread out across the region, but generally it is a very sparsely populated place. Denpasar, which is the capital of Bali, is also very densely populated. When I visited Bali a few years ago, I had absolutely no idea that this would be the case. I was under the impression that it was a peaceful, quiet, remote island, and oh boy was I wrong. The traffic and noise there is insane. China's population density spread is quite odd. There is literally a line which splits the country into two. The eastern part of the country is heavily populated, in fact where around 90% of the entire country lives. This means that only around 6% of the country live west of this line, which doesn't sound like a lot, but 6% of 1.4 billion is still around 84 million. That's about the same population as Germany or Iran. China's west, specifically its northwestern regions, are very far inland, away from the coast, which we all know is essential for trade and growth. The terrain of this region also isn't very favourable, with rugged mountains, deserts and high plateaus, not great for building cities in or raising farms. In contrast, China's coastal areas and fertile plains in the east have historically been centres of agricultural activity, trade and cultural exchange, leading to higher population densities. On this map from a distance, Iceland is pretty much fully white. It is a very sparsely populated country, and in fact a country with a very low population. Only around 375,000, of which nearly half live in just one city, the capital Reykjavik. Reykjavik has milder weather compared to other parts of the country, especially the north. The rough landscapes of the country make infrastructure hard to build and maintain, meaning most people live either in Reykjavik or the surrounding areas. Greenland is an even more extreme version of Iceland as it is around 21 times larger but has a population around 5 times smaller, making it the most sparsely populated territory on Earth. Around a third of the territory's total population lives in the capital, Nuuk, which is found on its southwestern coast. On this map, it is all but a tiny blue dot amongst a colossal white island. It gets even crazier, however, as the region known as the Northeast Greenland National Park covers a distance of nearly a million kilometres squared, yet no one permanently lives there. I actually found a settlement called Kangaluk, which has a population of just 13. It is found on an island called Disco Island on the west coast of the territory. Now this has to be one of the most remote inhabited places on Earth. But my god, who on earth would live there and why? Well, it seems that people have had enough of living there. The population has declined over the last few decades and has shrunk two-thirds since 2010. The vast majority of the Sahara Desert region is completely white on the population density map, which comes to no surprise as this is one of the most inhospitable places on earth. The Sahara stretches for a distance of around 9.2 million kilometres squared, 
an area larger than the entirety of Brazil, and not far off the size of the US or China. An estimated 2.5 million people live in this region, giving a population density of just 0.4 people per kilometer squared. In some regions, this is even lower. Just southwest of the Sahara Desert, you will find a region that is the complete opposite in terms of population. This region, known as Western Africa, has a population of around 450 million, about the same population as the US and Japan combined. However, over the coming decades, this will change significantly, as this region's population is set to explode. By the year 2100, this region could see a population of over a billion, of which nearly half will live in Nigeria alone. South America as a whole is a very sparsely populated continent. The continent covers a distance of around 18 million kilometers squared, and is home to around 440 million people, almost exactly the same as West Africa that we just spoke about. This gives the continent a population density of around 25 people per kilometer squared. Of course, this is just the average for the entire region. It differs significantly across the different areas. There are some very densely populated regions, however, especially on the central eastern coast, where you'll find some of the largest cities in the world, like Rio, Sao Paulo, and Buenos Aires further down. But then when it comes to other regions like the Atacama Desert, the Amazon Rainforest and Patagonia, very few people live across these vast stretches of land. Some 30 million people are estimated to live in the Amazon. The Amazon covers a distance of nearly 7 million kilometers squared. This gives the forest a population density of just 0.2 people per kilometer squared.